Hi folks, Dave here. Today I have on my workbench the WattCycle 12 volts 300 amp hour mini battery. Now just to be clear, WattCycle sent this battery to me for a review. I did not pay for it. It looks pretty large, but for a 300 amp hour battery it looks a bit on the small side and indeed it is smaller than you would expect and that's why they're calling it a mini battery. So what I'm going to do is put this battery through its paces. I'm going to put it on my other workbench and I'm going to attach it to a dedicated charge controller and solar panels and really put this battery through its paces and see what it can do. The only way to determine if it really has 300 amp hours in it is to do a real test, a deep cycle. Now this type of battery has its own integrated BMS and it's a virtually plug and play part of an off electrical grid solar power system. This battery has over three kilowatt hours of storage in it. Let's take a look at the label. There's the model number, 3.8 kilowatt hours, 3.84 kilowatt hours. So you could say it has three to three and a half kilowatt hours in it with a reserve. Let's take a look at the WattCycle website. They have a whole line of 12 volt batteries. And as you can see, the 12 volt 300 amp hour mini is their new product. They also have various other sizes as well. Now let's take a look at the 200 amp hour battery. You can see this is the 200 amp hour version and it's 21 by 8.2 by 8.5 inches. This particular one is not listed as a mini size. It has a 200 amp BMS, but just note the size, 21 by 8.2 by 8.5 inches and 45.2 pounds. We go to shop, 12 volt batteries and 300 amp hour mini. It says it's nearly 12 pounds lighter than a three pack of 12 volt 100 amp hours. 42% smaller than a 3-pack of 12-volt 100-amp-hour batteries. And I believe that because I've had two of the WattCycle 12-volt 100-amp-hour batteries on my bench before. Anyway, it's 15.12 by 7.64 by 10.4 inches and 57.32 pounds. Now, interestingly, if we take the dimensions of the battery and cube them, you get a number like this, 1,159 cubic inches. If I take the 200 amp hour battery and I had one third to it, it would be 1,951 cubic inches, but this 300 amp hour battery is 1,159 cubic inches. So I'm just doing some rough numbers to see um, what is the size comparison. It's a little bit hard to do that when the battery's on the workbench to get an idea. You can tell it's small, but it's hard to tell how much smaller. Now I'm using their 200 amp hour battery as a comparison because a 300 amp hour battery you would think would be one third bigger. So in this case, it's not because it's a mini battery, it is a compact form factor. They've crammed more power into a smaller box. Anyway, let's calculate the percentage based on a one-third bigger 200 amp hour battery, uh, non-mini size, and I'm coming up with about 41% or something like that. Let's just say 40%, so really that's quite impressive. Uh, and these are just rough numbers. So clearly there's more power storage in this battery, this 300 amp hour mini, but the size hasn't grown to what I would expect. It stayed rather small, and I find that pretty interesting. Other interesting specifications is that it uses automotive grade A LifePo 4 cells. I don't tend to rip the battery open to see what's in it. I'm just going to test it from a customer standpoint. Either it works or it doesn't. 200 amp hour BMS, IP65 waterproof rating, that's good. Anyway, it is allowed to put them in four series, so that means 48 volt or up to four in parallel. That's quite a beefy system. Now here's an interesting size comparison. They have the 300 amp hour mini battery compared to a 12 volt 300 amp hour AGM and other 12 volt 300 amp hour batteries and it's amazing uh, with especially with lead acid this type of battery would compare extremely favorably to lead acid agm batteries agm batteries are okay but of course they can't perform on the level of a lithium iron phosphate battery and there's a picture it looks like they have the aluminum encased cells that are in a vertical position able to be charged as long as it's above freezing and it can discharge down to minus four degrees fahrenheit i would certainly try to keep my batteries warmer than that but some people do have to put their batteries outdoors, and so you have to be careful if you're going to have the battery in a cold location. Now, they're claiming a 10-year lifespan, and uh, that's not a problem with lithium iron phosphate, as long as you take very good care of them. Here they say 15,000 cycles or more, and that's 60% depth of discharge. If you don't run it flat dead every single cycle, you could certainly expect 15,000 cycles. I agree that that's a very reasonable expectation. You might even get more. But that all depends on how you treat them. Okay, that concludes this quick look at WattCycle's specifications on their website. Let's take a look at the bench test and go ahead and finish that up and see how this battery performs. All right, I got the battery moved over to the other workbench. It was quite an effort. It's pretty heavy, but you would expect for 300 amp hours that there'd be significant weight increase. And I'm going to wire in a charge controller that's available, patch in my solar panels, and give this thing a complete full charge. Then I will bring over one of my inverters. It's the same as that one right there. And I will charge this battery up, run that inverter, and do a complete deep cycle test to see what it can do. Here's some of my test gear. 
So I'll need to get all this out and connect it to the battery and the charge controller and set up the test. So I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my Make Sky Blue charge controller connected to the battery. Right there, it's tapped into my solar panels outside the workshop. I'll include some footage of those solar panels. There's the battery charging up. I've got a 150 amp ANL fuse, Coulomb counting amp meter, 22 amps going in. I'm waiting for that to charge up. 300 watts. This is an amp NVT inverter, 1200 watt, low frequency pure sine wave inverter. And I'm going to use this to run the test load. I'm going to do a full charge on this battery and make sure it's 100% full. And then I'm going to turn off the charger and turn the inverter on and we'll run the test load. So the battery is now charging and I will just let it sit there until it's 100% charged. And then I will come back to start the discharge test. It's going to be a deep cycle test to see how much power is actually in this battery. Hopefully 300 amp hours, just like it says. Just a note about the charge rate, it's charging at about 47 amps. So it's going to take a good while to fill this battery up as it's 300 amp hours. Alright, this battery has been completely and fully charged. It doesn't have any charge controller connected. I've disconnected the charge controller completely. And now it's just the inverter and this battery. And I have my meter here to keep track of what's going on. Let's go ahead and start up the inverter. Okay, the inverter starting up. I've run an extension cord all the way from this inverter over here to... I'll show you where that's going. Over here I've got my little tiny 500 watt space heater. It's too cold to run air conditioning, so I'm going to go ahead and transition to a space heater. And this thing will allow me to put either a 300 or 500 watt load on my inverter and on the battery. I'll just set it to 500 watts and we'll see what happens. Okay, there's my heater. It's on. It's plugged into the inverter. And it's just now getting warmed up. This is not a heater that I've modified run off of DC and like some of my videos. This is just a plain AC space heater and it's pulling about 500 watts. Let's go take a look at the battery and see what that's doing. Okay, so we're doing about 37% load on this inverter, 120 volts. And according to the battery monitor, we're pushing 42 amps at 566 watts. So the next step is to simply let this test run to completion. And what I want to see is 300 amp hours in the battery. Maybe it has a little more, maybe it has a little less, who knows. When you buy a battery that's 300 amp hour, 200 amp hour, or whatever it is, you want to make sure it actually has that in it. And this kind of test is the way to see what their true capacity is. Okay, here's the status of the test. 13.1 volts. It hasn't been running that long. 570 watts. 6 hours and 20 minutes is what is estimated. And this number here can change. It depends. So 6 hours and 19 or 20 minutes. 275 amp hour. So 25 amp hour has already been consumed. And it's holding about 13.1 volts, which is pretty normal. Alright, here's a little midterm update here. Actually, it's past the halfway point. 36% according to the calculations on this amp meter, 12.9 volts or 12.89 volts. And it should have about 100 amp hours left depending on the capacity, the actual capacity. The heater has raised the temperature in this shop significantly. It's quite a large space to heat. Definitely made a difference in here. It's amazing that heater has been running off that battery, still has not run it down. Okay, here's the end of the test. The battery just barely has 300 amp hours in it, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off my inverter. And I don't like running these lithium iron phosphate batteries down flat dead, but I had to do that on this one in order to get the rated capacity. And it had a little bit more power in it, but I'm not willing to run it that hard just to get another half an amp hour, another one amp hour out of it. I don't see the point. Anyway, the battery pretty much has the capacity printed on the label, and I don't need to test that again because uh, it requires running it down to almost dead. It's recovering now. It was down a little bit below 11 volts. Okay, so how long did it run the heater? The answer is it ran that heater for over six and a half hours straight. Uh, I heated the room up in here a little bit too much, but I let the test keep running because I needed to finish it. According to my amp meter, the heater was consuming 575 watts, but that's not the whole story. This inverter is wasting about 20% of the power. That having been said, with a space heater attached to an inverter like this, if the inverter is located in the same room that you're heating, you still win because that 575 watts is coming from the battery and it's still going to manifest as heat because the power this inverter wastes will manifest as heat and the rest of the heat will be put out by the space heater. It may seem kind of strange, but about 20% of the heat that I got in my building today came from this inverter. And that's why inverters, you know, they waste power. If you're trying to make heat, I guess it's okay. It's not very efficient though. So it makes more sense to use a 12 volts DC heater instead. It's more efficient. Or you could use a direct PV DC powered space heater running straight off the solar panels. And that would be the most efficient because you wouldn't have to cycle a battery and you wouldn't need an inverter. 
and I've built several of those heaters. I have about a dozen of them. If you want to see how to build one, the links are in the description. So here's what I think after several days testing this watt cycle 300 amp hour mini battery. Remember, I don't get paid commissions for sales of this battery. My wish is to test it and inform you of my personal opinions and experience. Simply put, this battery met my expectations of a modern deep cycle lithium iron phosphate battery. It uses the latest technology and manages to cram more capacity into a smaller space. Based on its performance over the past few days, I can recommend it. A long-term durability test is now in progress, but that will take time. If you wish to purchase this battery, there are links and discount information in the description. Thanks to WattCycle for providing a sample battery for this test, and thanks for watching my review. I hope to see you next time. All related video and playlist links are posted in the description down below. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.